So portable power, it's on everyone's mind right now, especially if you've been watching the news from the Southern United States, where there's been almost a million people without power. So a lot of people have portable power on their minds right now for emergency preparedness. The reason I got into portable power was to charge my devices. I got it into it for convenience, for charging my drone batteries, my controllers, my cameras, like everything while I'm out in the field. And it's really convenient. But like I said, a lot of people are thinking about getting one of these right now. So I wanna show you one of the newest ones from EcoFlow. It's called the River Pro. And it is pretty awesome for what you get, the money that you pay and what you get. This is one of the best bangs for your buck as far as um, portable power. So I wanna show you everything that I have currently plugged into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just power it on. There's the main power and then the AC powers on the side here. So right now I'm charging my Sony 6600, my Mini 2 batteries, all three of them, the Insta360 1R uh, camera. I got my Mini 2 controller. I'm charging my Mavic Air 2 batteries, all three of those, plugged into the AC over here. And then also I got my Mavic 2 Pro battery I'm charging and the controller there. Um, also plugged into the USB, I got this red USB cable and that's charging a camera behind my smoker there. And I can't show you that camera right now, so if you wanna see what that camera is, you're gonna to have to subscribe uh, because that's coming real soon. So I can charge all of this stuff and right now it's only pulling 74 watts, so pretty cool. So what I wanted to do is I wanna see if I can charge all of this and at the same time cook myself some dinner on my little Traeger Ranger here. Some of you may have seen this already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the ignite button. And there it is running. And now we're pulling about 320 watts. So not even half of what this thing, well, half, about half of what this thing is capable of doing. So I could theoretically, you guys, I could throw this in the back of my pickup, drive out into, mil into the middle of nowhere. I could fly my drones. I could make a video, use my cameras, charge everything while everything's charging. I could cook myself some dinner with my little portable smoker here. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna show you all the technical specs and what comes in the box in the River Pro. Don't worry, I won't spend too much time on that. I know that gets to be kind of boring sometimes, but, and then also I wanna show you the solar charging abilities of the River Pro. EcoFlow also makes a 160 watt solar panel. And I was fortunate enough to get that as well. EcoFlow sent me both of those. So thank you very much, EcoFlow. And, uh, and just show you how convenient this thing is. It's so awesome. So if you're thinking about getting a portable power station, maybe this is one that you wanna consider. So let's head inside and talk about the EcoFlow River Pro. You know what, I just decided, I wanna show you the solar part of this thing right away because the sunlight is just right right now for charging this today. So. I just went ahead and set up this 160 watt solar panel from EcoFlow. The River Pro can handle up to 200 watts of solar input. So having that 160 watt is pretty nice. Uh, the disadvantage of having something like this, something this big is it's not as convenient to carry around. So if you're gonna be hiking, you know, any amount of distance, I wouldn't wanna carry this too far. But you know, if you're parking alongside the road and maybe hiking in a couple of hundred yards or whatever, you know, then, it, then I think it would be okay. So. Uh, the River Pro does come with the MC4 cables, MC4 to XT60 connector, so uh, that's what most, most solar panels are, but you can also buy adapters if your solar panel is not um, MC4 connection. But uh, it's pretty simple. On the, um, on the left-hand side, this is where the charging port is, the XT60. You just plug it right in, and it looks like right now, well, I'm kind of blocking it, but and we could maybe angle this a little bit better. So. One of the other convenient things about this panel is the case, and you might see it here, and I'll put a little B-roll up here, but the, the storage case actually acts as kind of a, a stand for the solar panel. So you can just take it out and use these carabiner clips, clip it on top, and then you're able to position it um, a little bit better. It's not the best design. Uh, I kind of wish this bottom flap was stiffer. Like I wish it wasn't so flimsy. Uh, you know, they could have made that side as stiff as this side, there's like a plastic board inside here. I kind of wish they would have done that with the bottom as well. And then that would allow you to, I think that would allow you to adjust it a little bit more easily. So, but it, it works pretty well. It does get it at the right angle to the sun. So let's take a look here and see what we're pulling in. So yeah, we're pulling in 123 watts right now and I could probably position it just a little bit better. So 
So if you think about that, we're pulling in 123 watts. And if I was just charging all of this stuff that I just showed you, um, you know, all my cameras and my drone batteries and stuff like that, we would actually be gaining storage. Like I think it was only pulling 75, between 75 and 100 watts. And right now I'm pulling in 120 watts. So we could actually charge everything out in the field with this solar panel, you guys and be gaining storage. Like that's just crazy to me. So the two disadvantages to this big sucker here, it's it's not very light. And so it's not convenient for, you know, if you're gonna be out tenting or a long time camping out in the middle of nowhere, definitely wouldn't wanna carry this thing around. They do make a 110 watt panel. That's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. Uh, but then of course you're not gonna get, you know, full capacity on that. You're probably only gonna, about, gonna get about 80 watts of uh, input on a good day. The other disadvantage is this one's a little more expensive. And so this is really for those of you that are gonna be using this on a regular basis, like your hardcore off-grid kind of person, um, or you just have some expendable income. But, uh, but if you're one of those two people, definitely I would consider getting the solar panel because um, you'll be able to charge this, you know, pretty quickly uh, by using the sun. So yeah, still pulling in 120. You'd have to kind of keep maneuvering it to, you know, keep track with the sun, but but uh, yeah, so that's just another way to charge the River Pro. So in the box of the EcoFlow River Pro, you get the power station, the AC and the car charging cable, the MC4 to XT60 cable for solar charging. You get the DC to DC cable and the user manual. Now looking at the exterior of the unit at the very top is a solid gray handle that provides a nice ergonomic grip. Now the River Pro does weigh almost 16 pounds or 7.2 kilograms. So it's not heavy by any means, but having a nice solid handle gives it good balance. Now on the front of the unit, starting on the left hand side, there is a light that has low, high and flashing settings. Below that is the Wi-Fi reset button. And yes, it has Wi-Fi, which we're gonna discuss here shortly. At the top middle is the LCD panel that displays all pertinent information, including the remaining runtime and current load, a percentage remaining indicator, the input and the output wattage, and it has several icons that will pop up with any warnings. Beneath the display is a 100 watt USB-C port, two USB-A ports, and a fast charge USB-A. The power button is below those. On the right front is the DC and the DC5521 ports and the power button. On the left side of the unit is the charging inputs, including the AC and the XT60 port and the overload reset button. On the right side at the top is a ventilation fan and below that is three 600 watt AC outlets. Now the power button is next to those and at the very bottom is the expansion power port in which you can plug in a River Pro extra battery to expand your capacity to 1440 watt hours. So what are the highlights of this power station? Well, most importantly, the River Pro uses patented technology called Extreme, which allows it to be charged from zero to 80% in 60 minutes. And I tested it and I went from 2% up to 90% in 60 minutes. It actually reached 80% at 50 minutes. So it's faster than what is advertised. Now that is the fastest charging capability available today in a portable power station. No other brand even comes close to that. Secondly, the River Pro has UPS support. And no, that doesn't mean that it powers brown delivery trucks. UPS allows you to plug the River Pro into an AC outlet, and then you plug your device into the unit. And if the power grid goes down for some reason, the River Pro will begin powering whatever is plugged into it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a real quick example of how the UPS works, uh, the uninterrupted power supply. So here's my little freezer I have in the garage, and right now it's being run through the River Pro. So I have the River Pro plugged into the wall, into the GFI here, and then I have the freezer plugged into the AC outlet of the River Pro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and trip the GFI right now, and I wanna show you um, what happens. I'm just gonna put it on the power light there so you can see what happens. So I'm gonna trip the breaker right now in three, two, one. So you can see right there it flashed. And right now we're getting no AC input and we're getting an 84 watts going into the freezer. So, and it looks like it's gonna be able to power the freezer for about nine hours. So if you're not home one day and the power goes off, you don't have to worry about your freezer uh, being shut off for too long. At least it'll stay on for another nine hours and then uh, that'll give you time to get more power to it. So that's how the UPS system works. Now it's not instant. It does take up to 30 milliseconds 
I know, slow, right? 30 milliseconds, come on. But just keep that in mind, that it does not support zero millisecond switching. But still, that's pretty cool. Thirdly, the River Pro can be connected to an additional battery, which doubles your capacity to 1,440 watt hours. Fourth, it can support up to 200 watts of solar charging, which I already showed you. Fifth, the River Pro is a 600 watt power station, but it can actually power things that require between 600 and 1200 watts, and some things up to 1800 watts. And it does that by using its X Boost mode. It has X Boost mode enabled by default, so when you get it, it's already enabled. And you can disable it by using the app to turn it off, but why would you want to do that? I don't know why you would ever want to turn that off. I'd say just leave it on. Now one caveat to that capability is that many appliances, many devices have very strict voltage requirements. So there are some things that are over 1200 watts that it's not gonna be able to power. For instance, a microwave. Like I tried it on my 1100 watt microwave in my camper and it did not work with that. But there are many devices that it can power. Okay, so what I wanna check out now is for those of you that like to go glamping, like my family and I, not camping, but glamping. We have a 36 foot fifth wheel and we like to have all the conveniences of home when we're out camping, but sometimes we like to be in the primitive area so we don't have AC power, we're using our DC power, and what if that DC battery goes dead? So I wanna see if we can have lights, I wanna see if we can have uh, refrigeration, I wanna see if I can get the slide outs in and out, because if your slide outs are stuck out, you can't take your camper home. And then finally I wanna see if we can get some heat. So I'm pretty confident we can have lights, so I'm just gonna flip on a couple of lights here. So that's the living room and the kitchen area lights, and that is pulling about 250 watts. Okay, so pretty confident we can have lights. I'm gonna go ahead and flip those off. The next thing I wanna see is the refrigerator. Can we have refrigeration? So I'm gonna flip that on and then I'm gonna flip it all the way over to coldest because it's about 35 degrees in here. So I wanna turn that compressor on and see how what that pulls. And it looks like the compressor pulls about 375 watts on the refrigerator compressor. So that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then now I wanna see if I can get my slide outs in and out, because like I said, if your slide outs are stuck out, you lose your battery, you're pretty much, you're gonna leave your camper there. So let's see if we can move the big slide out. So this is the big living room slide out. It's gonna push the out button here. And it works. Let's see what it's pulling. So I'll put it back in. Oh, hardly anything. So those motors only pull about 150, 175 watts. So that's pretty good to know. And then finally, I wanna see if we can have heat. So if we're out and we wanna be able to stay there for another night or whatever, I wanna see if it's gonna run our heater fan. Now the camper runs on propane. So I got the propane turned on um, and I'm just gonna flip it on. I don't have to turn it up at all because it's 35 in here. And yes, the fan is blowing. Let's see what we're pulling. We're pulling 208, 209 watts. So pretty easy. So we could theoretically, we could have the heater on. I'm gonna flip this on. We could have the refrigerator on. And that puts us at 533. And I think we could also, with that X boost on the River Pro, we could also turn on one of the lights. 580, how about two of the lights? 600, we got all our lights, we got our heat, we have our refrigerator. Wow, so pretty cool. So that X boost allows you to go above the 600 watts. It's a 600 watt um, inverter, but we can power more than that, so pretty cool. So just be sure that you test it at home before you head out somewhere and risk being disappointed that you can't make your popcorn for the movie while you're camping in your glamper. <laughs> now lastly, the River Pro can be controlled with your phone. EcoFlow has an app that allows you to monitor the input, the output. You can turn on the light, the AC, and the DC power. And then you can also use it to adjust your standby times, enable quiet charging, and update the firmware. And then as I mentioned, the app is also where you can enable and disable the X-Boost feature. So are there any opportunities for improvement on the River Pro? Yes, the fan 
is a little bit loud. It does run especially high during high output times. It's not excessive, but it's definitely noticeable. I don't know if you can make it much quieter and have it still cool appropriately, but that is one thing that I noticed right off the bat. Now, one other small thing that I'd like to see changed in future models is for that charging port cover to be able to be pushed inside when it's open. I could see that easily being broken off. Another suggestion that I have that might be a little fun is to add some adjustable ambient light to it somewhere that could serve as a fill light and a tent or maybe a night light, like maybe some ambient light on the bottom or something. But as far as functionality, I really don't have any complaints or suggestions about the unit. Now concerning that 160 watt solar panel, my only wish is that the prop up stand functionality would be improved a little bit on the bag by adding some rigid stability to it. Otherwise, I think it's great. The River Pro is a high quality power station that will serve most of the needs of the average person. Now, whether you're an outdoor enthusiast, a household hobbyist, or you just want to be prepared for power loss, check out the EcoFlow River Pro by using the links in the video description below. Hey, comment below what would be your ideal portable power station. Is it this one or is there something else that you think is better? Hit a thumb on your way out of the video today, preferably the one that's pointing up. I like that one a lot better. Subscribe for future videos. Thank you for watching the entire video today, everyone. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Okay, so did you know that the US has more power outages than any other developed country in the world? Back in 2017, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave the electrical grid of the US a rating of D+. You see, the majority of our electrical grid was built about 70 years ago. And at the time, they gave it a life expectancy of about 50 years. So we're about 20 years beyond that. We have over 640,000 miles of electrical lines and most of the time, those are running at full capacity and they were not designed to do that. The United States government has stated that if nine of the 55,000 substations in the US were to fail, we would have a coast to coast blackout for 18 months. I don't know about you, but that's a little bit concerning to me. Now at the beginning of this video, I said that portable power was more popular than ever, but they're really becoming more important than ever for emergency preparedness. And I think a lot of people are gonna start getting into it. They're starting to become more aware of this. And in my opinion, I think within the next 10 years, the majority of households in America will have some type of portable power device. So there are just a few happy thoughts for you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.